Rank and Rent is a seriously overpowered way of monetizing search engine optimization. The concept is simple. You rank a website and then you rent that website out to another business for a fee. For example, if you started ranking for Dentist Chicago, you could then rent out your website to a local dentist for money. But don't let its simplicity fool you. The monetization and scaling potential of this strategy are nuts. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how it's done. Now there's four main reasons why the rank and rent model is so awesome. First, because it's easy as hell. You're gonna be targeting local keywords rather than national ones. You're not gonna be ranking for dentist, you're ranking for dentist Chicago, or even easier, dentist North Park, which would be a neighborhood in San Diego. This makes the rank and rent model awesome for beginner SEOs. It's also super easy to sell to clients. You're not gonna be approaching potential clients until you're already ranking and you already have leads for them, which makes it a super easy pitch. You're not selling them SEO services, you're selling them leads, which is a no-brainer for every business. The second reason this model is awesome is because you own the asset. The key word here is rent. You're not gonna be putting in a ton of time and money ranking someone else's asset, you're gonna be working on your own asset. Most small businesses leave their SEO agency at some point. This study by Backlinko shows just how many agencies a typical small business uses. With rank and rent, if a client leaves you, great, just sell those leads to someone else. The third reason why this model is awesome is because you barely need to interact with your clients. You don't need to get permission from them on any SEO tasks. They're not gonna be breathing down your neck, calling you at midnight, asking you ridiculous SEO questions. And the last reason the rank and rent model is so awesome is because it's very, very scalable. Local rank and rent websites don't take much effort or maintenance. You can totally get away with ranking a minimal site and then moving over to another rank and rent project. And a lot of the time you can cut and paste the same template over and over again for multiple sites in your portfolio. The scalability is incredible. So now that you understand how powerful this model is I'm going to show you how it's done from picking a niche to ranking a site to finding high paying clients to rent to but first I'd like to ask you to rent the like button just click it once and when it turns blue that means the like button is rented out for you until the end of time pretty sweet deal now let's get right into the meat and potatoes of how to actually get a website ranked so you can rent that thing out. And that starts with niche selection, the most important part. Now with rank and rent, your niche is twofold. First, you need to consider what industry you're going to be in. For example, roofers, dentists, plumbers, etc. You also need to consider where you're going to be ranking, what city you're going to be going after. Then you're going to want to make sure you're in a niche that's easy enough, but at the same time has enough search volume for it to be worth it. You also want to make sure your niche is lucrative enough for your potential client in order to pay for leads. I've tagged in Herc Magnus, Rank and Rent OG to comment. I want to tell you how to find the perfect keyword for a Rank and Rent website. Number one, it must be profitable. Home services that are expensive to purchase like shingling your home, building a garage, building a deck, not something like cutting your grass. Number two, it must be easy to rank. So a lower search volume keyword somewhere in the range of 100 to 300 searches per month is going to correlate to lower first page competition. It should be in a smaller city from around 100,000 to 300,000 population because smaller cities have less businesses who have websites making it easier to rank. Now, top 10 analysis tips. Look on the first page for websites that do not have your exact keyword phrase in their title and in their URL. Number two, Look for the big authority sites like Yelp, Home Advisor, Angie's List to not be actively building links to the listing on their website. They'll have a high DA but literally no links to the page and a low PA. Number three, look for local sites that have a low PA and DA under 20 and they're not actively building a lot of links. That's going to make for a very easy first page. Now, as Herc says, if you're just starting out, you should target smallish cities. But once you've leveled up, you can definitely compete at the state or national level. Now, before you jump into a niche, you also want to consider who you're going to be working with. Now, for this, I've tagged in the bearded rank and rent sensation Will Tribe for some wise words. When doing pay per call, we find it's best to partner with companies which have inbound call staff and already track their own marketing efforts. This means that your phone calls are being answered and they understand the value of your leads. Ideally, the partner will cover multiple locations, which gives you plenty of room to expand. Now for the rest of this video, we're going to be hypothetically using the Hillsboro landscaping niche for purposes of illustration. Next, it's time to choose a domain name. For this, I highly recommend going for an exact match domain, also known as an EMD. They're still very overpowered, especially for rank and rent. So for me, hillsborolandscapers.com would be ideal. But if it were already taken, I'd also be totally cool with a .net, .org, or .whatever. Next, it's time to host and set up your site. For this, I recommend using a solid host like WPX 
index, link in the description below, and use a standard content management system like WordPress. I often see people setting up rank and rent websites with Wix, but trust me on this one, stick to WordPress. Next, you need to start doing some keyword research. Do a search for your keyword to find your competitors. Then load them up one by one and take a look at the various service pages they created. A nice trick is just to look at the navigation menu for a services dropdown. You're going to want to cover all these services with your own pages, but it's often not enough just to create these service pages and hope to rank. You may have to create some supporting blog content, so check out their blog as well for supporting content ideas. Lastly, if you have an Ahrefs account, simply toss your competitors in Ahrefs and look at the organic keywords report to reverse engineer their keywords. Along the same lines, you can use Ahrefs Content Explorer to get content ideas. Type in your keyword at the top, and select in title so you're only looking for content ideas with your keyword in the title. Then set a maximum number of referring domains to five and a minimum amount of traffic to be 100. Now, at the bottom, you have a list of content ideas that pull traffic in your niche that take nearly no backlinks to rank. Now that you know what you need to write, it's time to start writing. For this, I recommend Surfer's Content Editor. It's gonna reverse engineer the pages ranked highly in your niche and give your writers a framework to give Google exactly what it wants to see. First, you select your competitors. It will then tell you how many words you should write, the structure of the article, and how many images you should use. You also get detailed guidance on what words and entities should be written in the content based on Google's natural language processing API. Now pass this over to your writer. As they write, the key indicator will update on the right, letting them know if they're headed in the right direction based on your spec. As the articles are written, start uploading them to your site. And make sure to interlink relevant articles together to establish topical relevance, a necessary component for ranking these days. I've left a link in the description so you can learn more about topical relevance and interlinking. Next, it's time to create a Google My Business, also known as a GMB. Registering a GMB is a necessary component for ranking in the map pack, which is a great way to automatically jump up to the top of Google's search result page. And despite having the opportunity to rank in the map pack, having a GMB is also a good ranking signal and indicator for ranking organically in the Google search results. But getting a GMB can be a little bit tricky for rank and rent sites, so I've tagged in my buddy Adrian Boisel to comment. There are three ways you can get a Google My Business location. First way is by posting on Craigslist, doing a social media hiring ad under gigs, and paying $100, $200, $300, maybe even $500 to use their address or their friend's address or their business location's address where they can get mail and verify that postcard for you and create the location from their account. They can then assign you access. It's a simple way to go. Number two is actually going onto Craigslist and looking for virtual offices. You can find virtual offices for 100 to 200 to $300 a month. You do the first month, the last month, you get the postcard, you verify it, and then you move on. The third way is through Facebook groups. And this is one of the methods that I like to use. I have a massive community. There are communities on Facebook for digital marketing where you can find somebody in that specific area. Just post a comment or post an actual post within the Facebook group saying, hey, I'm looking for somebody in this area. And then reach out to them and let them know what you're trying to do. You don't have to list the address of that location and you can get yourself a Google My Business location that way. After that, you want to start link building, and the first links I recommend building are business citations. These are your typical business directory entries where you're entering in your name, address, phone number into a directory. There's three types of directories you want to go after. First, find all the local business directories you can and get your business in there. Next, find all your industry-related directories, like this national directory for landscapers. Lastly, don't forget the big guys like Yelp and Yellow Pages. After that, load up your competitors into Ahrefs again, but this time you're going to reverse engineer their backlinks. You're going to want to get as many of these as possible. After all, these are the same links that got them to page one of Google. And now that you've gotten a baseline of links set up, it's now time to outdo your competition with a guest post outreach campaign. And for this, I have to recommend my own service, Authority Builders. Now, I know that was a fast crash course in Rank and Rent SEO. So if you want a detailed breakdown, I've left a link to a full article in the description down below. But now let's move on to the most important part, and that's actually monetizing those leads and ranking your website out to a potential client. The first thing I want you to know is that pitching clients for Rank and Rent is completely different than pitching typical SEO services. It's a different ball game completely when it comes to difficulty. Just remember, you don't have to convince someone to trust you enough to work on their website. You don't need to stand out from the hundreds of other SEO agencies that are annoying them every week. Remember that you already have the traffic and the leads. I've called in my buddy and raging introvert, Chris Manak, to comment. Thanks, Matt. So your website is ranking, you're getting leads, you have someone on the phone who may be interested in taking them. What does that pitch look like? So keep it super simple and to the point. Hey, Kevin, sorry for the random call. Look, 
I have a carpentry business in Toronto. I get like four to five bookings every week and I'm just looking for someone who can take over the work if you might be interested. You'll likely get a skeptical response, which you're gonna counter by offering to give them the leads for free, no strings attached for a trial period of two to four weeks. The question is just whether or not the price that you're selling these leads matches up with the price that these guys wanna pay for them. And that depends on the industry. So do your research and know your numbers. Find out how much people pay for their services by going to their site. Use their contact form and get an estimate. Then just work from there. Make sure to leave room for conversion rate and profit margin. Or you can do five seconds of research and see how much businesses are already paying for leads using a third-party lead broker. Now if you're super shy and can't really stomach the idea of cold calling, I got a solution for you coming up, don't worry. But first let's define what are the target businesses that you actually want to work with. The good thing is your potential customer base is any local business in your industry that relies on leads, which is pretty much all of them. But you can even pivot into shoulder niches. For example, if you're selling web design leads, you can also approach SEO agencies or print media companies who have always wanted to pivot into web design offerings. But before you pull the trigger and start pitching someone, consider these two rules. First, remember Will's advice of only going for businesses that are big enough or smart enough to track their own marketing. Second, look for businesses that appear to be scalable and have the potential to 2x their own businesses based on your deal flow. By the way, that's an excellent question to ask them in their customer interview. Before we start working together, do you have the capability of 2xing your business? Ball or play. Now, once you're pitching, you have two different ways to sell the leads. You can rent out the whole site for a fixed fee per month, rank and rent. Or you can sell the leads individually, which is called pay per lead or PPL. Both have their pros and cons. And renting out your website is super low hassle. You rent the thing out, do your job, and they're gonna pay you every month on invoice subscription. But if your website increases in traffic every month, which is your plan, you're gonna have to continuously renegotiate, which puts things in favor of PPL. It's all about personal preference. Now, if you don't wanna be the person cold calling, don't wanna deal with rejections on the phone and all that, you can always sell your leads to a middleman or broker. There's tons of sites on the internet that act as a marketplace for leads. So buyers will go there to buy leads and folks like you will go there to sell them. And make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this.